Today we're going to talk about acute kidney injury. This presentation is going to be given to Term 5 BSN students during the Health and Illness course and it'll be in the classroom setting. Our learning objectives for this presentation are to distinguish patients that are at high risk for acute kidney injury, describe the pathophysiology of the three types of AKI, and be able to provide examples of each, describe each phase as well as each stage of AKI, and then we'll have the students formulate a nursing plan of care for these patients. This is the flow of our presentation. So first we're going to talk about the types of AKI. So we've got pre-renal, intrarenal, and post-renal. So to give a little depiction of that, if we have our kidney here, excuse my terrible drawing, we've got our renal artery coming in, we've got our renal vein coming out, and we've got our ureter coming down to bring the urine into our bladder, and then the urethra coming out. So, oops, sorry, if the injury occurs up here, anything that blocks the blood flow to the kidney or there's not enough blood flow to the kidney, so cardiac failure, hypovolemia, um, hypotension, this could cause damage to the kidney. And that would be a pre-renal cause, something that's occurring above the kidney itself. If the damage occurs within the kidney, then this is known as intrarenal. So this is damage to the glomerular capillaries, the renal tubular epithelium, or the renal interstitium. So this is anything that affects the ability of the kidney to do its job as far as filtering. This, so that could be glomerulonephritis or pyelonephritis. If the injury occurs anywhere down here, anything that obstructs the flow of the urine out of the kidney itself, then that is referred to as post-renal. This is typically an obstructive kidney stone that's causing a backup of urine into the kidney. So next we have the phases of AKI. So we progress through onset, which is when the injury to the kidney occurs. And we then progress into the allegoric phase, and this is when you're really starting to see the damage that has occurred. So we have a decrease in our urine output, your BUN and your creatinine will start to increase, and you'll start to see the electrolyte disturbances such as hyponatremia and hyperkalemia, as well as a metabolic acidosis. Once we've corrected the cause of the kidney injury and the kidneys start to heal, we enter the diuretic phase. So this is when your urine output increases back up to normal or above what is considered normal. So that can lead to electrolyte depletion because the tubules have not quite recovered yet and aren't really doing their job to the fullest extent. We then enter the recovery phase. So the edema resolves and renal function truly starts to improve, but this can take several months to a year to fully recover or to determine what, our, what the patient's new normal will be as far as kidney function. The stages of AKI I refer to with the rifle classification. So it begins with risk. So this is when our creatinine starts to increase above baseline or the GFR starts to decrease and you're, you might see a slight decrease in urine output. And then injury occurs. So now the creatinine is two times the baseline and you're starting to get pretty worried. It then can progress into failure with a creatinine of three times above baseline or greater than four. So this is when you're starting to consider patients for renal replacement therapy such as dialysis or CER, CCRT. And then we have a loss of kidney function. So this is when there has been a complete loss of kidney function requiring dialysis or a renal replacement for more than four weeks. This can then turn into end-stage renal disease if it progresses for longer than three months. And that's when you have to consider either lifelong dialysis or kidney transplant for the patient. AKI is pretty prevalent in the hospital environment. And this is due to the fact that over 15% of Americans over 70 have a baseline renal dysfunction, which predisposes them to AKI, leading to over 60% of ICU patients having severe AKI and 5 to 7% of hospitalized patients overall. Other risk factors include that age over 70, female gender, African American descent, and certain medical histories such as diabetes, cardiac disease, hypertension, or chronic kidney disease that may are there may already be damage present any use of nephrotoxic drugs on a frequent basis or patients that have experienced trauma sepsis cardiac arrest or extensive burns so these are typically items that can decrease the blood flow to the kidney 
So treatment of AKI centers primarily around eliminating the cause. So first we have to stop the damage to the kidney so that nothing continues to progress. During that time, you have to make sure that there's adequate perfusion of the kidneys, making sure that there's enough volume of blood and that the cardiac output remains strong. And then you have to manage the signs and symptoms that are occurring because of this kidney failure and prevent any additional complications. So you're balancing your electrolytes to prevent any dysrhythmias. You're ensuring adequate perfusion and treating fluid overload to prevent edema. If there's adequate perfusion, you can restrict fluids to try and prevent fluid overload and the need for diuretics because some diuretics can actually make the kidney injury worse. Um, dialysis as needed and as I said renal replacement therapy if necessary and nutrition so because the kidneys aren't going to be able to filter potassium and phosphate and sodium as well you need to make sure that all of those things are balanced well in the diet and ensure that the patient is getting adequate protein so at this stage I would ask this, the students to split up into groups and identify potential nursing diagnoses that they think would, would be appropriate for these patients and then identify some nursing interventions that they would follow through. And then we'll discuss what they came up with and discuss some of those that I identified as being possible along with some help. So we could have excess fluid volume related to kidney failure, risk for infection related to lines and the altered immune responses that can occur in kidney injury, imbalanced nutrition as we discussed previously, and anxiety of course because these patients are going through a pretty substantial injury to their body and are unsure about how it's going to progress and how it's going to turn out. So interventions for all of these diagnoses, we want to provide education to the family as much as possible to decrease anxiety and help them know what to expect. We observe and record strict intake and output so that we can balance our fluid overload as well as we can. Monitor our vital signs and our EKG, especially because of all these electrolyte disturbances and the risk for arrhythmias measure daily weights, that refers right back to our strict INO and our management of fluid overload, monitor for other signs and symptoms of electrolyte disturbances related to hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, maintain aseptic technique and protect patients from infection as much as possible since they are at a higher risk during this time frame, and then provide skin care and measures to prevent pressure ulcers as sometimes these patients will be very weak, they may be edematous, and these things can increase their risk for pressure injuries. After this presentation, we will evaluate the students by having them create a nursing care plan at home, use, identifying at least three nursing diagnoses and following through their interventions and their goals of care for the patient. They will then be given a list of, of patients with certain backgrounds and, and situations, and they will have to identify those that they believe will be at higher risk for AKI during, during their hospitalization. And they will then have a quiz where they need to achieve 85% or higher, and this quiz will cover the types, phases, and stages of AKI. So this is discussing how each of the activities that we did during the presentation links to our objectives. And then here are all of our references. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.